Hello, Bridgetown Church, and those of you joining us online, my name is Bethany Allen. Today we kick off Black History Month, and we thought it would be fitting to hear weekly from leaders of color within our community who are serving within the life of our church. With that, I am so happy to introduce to you today Dr. Deidre Burton. Dr. D, as we affectionately call her, has been a gift and voice within our community that we both respect and admire. She is a brilliant pediatrician, mother, leader, and a member of our Racial Justice Committee. I am certain you will be so blessed by what she has to share. My name is Deidre, and this is the Bridgetown Daily for Monday, the 1st of February. As Bethany said, this is the beginning of February and Black History Month. Black or African American History Month is a month set aside to reflect on 400 years of the Black experience and to celebrate the achievements of Black men and women and our central role in the history of the United States. This year, as February rolls around, it feels different for so many reasons. At the forefront, we have all been impacted by the pandemic, and we have been confronted by the evidence of ongoing systemic racism in our country over the last year and the cry for justice. During the pause of the pandemic, there was time to reevaluate, to reflect, and recommit to the things that really matter. At the same time, the increased awareness of the racism woven into the culture of our nation highlights the current struggle and the struggles of those who have gone before. The product of my reflection is a profound gratitude for the everyday faithfulness that God demonstrates and for the steadfastness and resilience of my own parents. As I reflect on my personal history, I am awed by the faithfulness of God and the example of faithfulness in my mother and father. Faithfulness is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says to us, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. As a child attending primarily majority schools, Black History Month meant a cursory reference to Booker T. Washington, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., or Harriet Tubman. Today, as I contemplate Black history, I realize that it is more than retelling a few well-known stories or names in a history book, or even uncovering stories of heroes and heroines that have not yet been told. Black history is more current, closer, and more personal. My parents lived history and raised children that would continue to be a part of a story of resilience, strength, and hope. Their story is one that includes darkness, pain, loss, grief, and injustice. However, they are defined by their steadfastness and even more so their faithfulness to God and their family. Faithfulness is the central theme of the story that my parents lived. Their story is the Black history that I engaged with every day. One of the individuals who lived Black history before my eyes and showed me every day the contribution he made to our story was my father. Captain Samuel E. Burton was born in 1941. He was the 12th of 15 children in Baytown, Texas. He was born into a world where segregation was law, poverty was common, education was elusive, and lynching occurred without fear of legal reprisals. His mother died when he was 11 and resources were limited. Enough food to eat or shoes that kept your feet from touching the bare ground were not guaranteed. My dad worked running errands, driving, delivering groceries and papers by the time he was just 12 years old. He didn't complain about all the things he didn't have or how unfair his life was. He was faithful with the meager resources that he had and made the most of the opportunities presented to him. He welcomed the mentoring of his junior high principal, who himself had fought against the odds to get a college education. While he was in school, my dad was reminded of the risks and limitations of being a young black man in America. Just before he started high school, the Supreme Court ruled on Brown v. Board of Education and struck down racial segregation in public schools. His high school remained segregated. During his high school years, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old visiting from Chicago, was brutally killed in Mississippi for, quote, flirting with a white woman. Rosa Parks refused to move to the back of the bus. Pastors and civil rights leaders met in Atlanta to discuss nonviolent protests, 
and nine black students attempted to integrate a high school in Little Rock. The Little Rock Nine only succeeded when the National Guard was called out to accompany them. Despite obstacles, lack of means, and the backdrop of the overtly racist South, my father was committed to getting an education. He attended school in Alabama. It was dangerous to go into town or to travel after dark. Yet he was steadfast and faithful, and in 1963, he graduated from Tuskegee Institute, becoming the first person in his family to receive a college degree. That same year, he married my mother, Dosha Daniels. He went on to get a law degree from Lewis and Clark here in Portland while holding down a full-time job. Early in my childhood, my parents committed their lives to Jesus. With that commitment, they patterned their lives after the teachings of Jesus. They determined to be a family that used their resources to help others. They were foster parents while stationed in Klamath Falls. Over the years, our home provided a place for a pregnant teen, a woman fleeing an abusive spouse, a young man in adolescent crisis, a child who needed a home, love, and tutoring. At home, my dad modeled the importance of family in the way he served and loved our mom, my brothers, and me. He responded to injustice and racism with strength, courage, and integrity. He upended stereotypes by his very presence. Over the course of his career in the Air Force and later the Coast Guard, he mentored men and women, pushing them to go beyond the limits society had placed on them. He was unwavering in his commitment to Jesus and shared his faith by speaking the truth in love, fathering the fatherless, feeding the hungry, and sharing the word. My father's story is not one shared in elementary schools around the United States, but his is a story worth sharing. He was a faithful and loving man that was not embittered or defined by the constraints or obstacles that society threw at him because of the color of his skin. He was faithful to God and his family. Until his death, he encouraged and challenged those around him to exceed the expectations of others and defy the limitations of any who tried to hold them back. He refused to be defined by stereotypes and was committed to his pursuit of Jesus and demonstrating God's love. To me, this is Black History. As I reflect on Black History Month, I think of Black astronauts, scientists, inventors, doctors, engineers, Olympians, politicians, explorers, lawmakers, abolitionists, teachers, civil rights leaders that played a central role in the history of the United States. I also think of my dad and my mom, their unwavering faith in Jesus, the children they raised, the students they taught, the obstacles they overcame, and the impact they have had on communities in our country that will not make a history book, but are no less profound. I am challenged to be more like those who have gone before me. Am I steadfast in my pursuit of Jesus? Do I get derailed by circumstances, pandemic, systemic racism, disappointments? Do I really believe that God is faithful? That no matter what is on Fox News or CNN or my Instagram, that he will not leave me or forsake me? God is faithful, and to demonstrate faithfulness, I must hold fast to what is true. He is good. He loves me. He desires relationship with me. As an apprentice to Jesus, we are to demonstrate faithfulness. When we spend time with Jesus and surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit, we take God at his word. Today, as we mark the beginning of Black History Month, I am celebrating the faithfulness of God. I am grateful for the example of faithfulness in my parents. I honor them as heroes of the faith, but also as individuals who survived Jim Crow and poverty. Their legacy is one of opening their home to those in need, mentoring men and women in the military, raising a family, educating students, and sharing the love of Jesus with whoever crossed their path. Prior to this podcast, you had never heard of them, yet their story is one like many other men and women of color that is worthy to be celebrated this month. This is my history, but it is not the end of our story. The faithfulness of God and his redeeming love could easily be the title of the story of my parents' lives. The hope of each of our stories is to know him, to experience his faithfulness, 
and to be faithful. Finally, I just want to pray for all of us. Father, you are our rock and strong tower. May we be resolute in our trust in you. Thank you that you are faithful even when we are not. Thank you for your redeeming love and your mercies that are new every morning. Bring to mind today the many ways you have demonstrated your faithfulness and love to us. May our hearts and minds be transformed as we abide in you and abandon ourselves to your faithfulness. Amen. Happy February. Celebrate Black History Month with all of us. Mm -hmm.